The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. This is number six on Chem 2045's Exam 1, Fall 2009. Number six reads, <clears throat> what volume of a 0.125 molar oxalic acid solution is required to titrate 53.20 mils of a 0.546 molar sodium hydroxide solution. How, uh, yeah, solution. So, we're dealing with the titration here. And it's very important to understand what titration is in order to uh, conceptualize the problem. And since many chemistry students have not been in a chemistry lab or have performed the titration, uh, I just want to take a minute and go over what that is and it'll help us solve this problem. Titration, in, in very simplified terms, is a, a controlled chemical reaction. We're going to separate our two chemicals, one in a burette up here and another in an Erlenmeyer flask. And then we're going to let the two chemicals come together. We're going to drip the chemical in the burette into the Erlenmeyer flask, drop by drop. And that way we can control the reaction. What's so special about titrations, though, is if we put a little bit of dye in here, in the Erlenmeyer flask, the dye, because we picked it so wisely, tells us when, when there's no more chemical in here, in other words, when the chemical reaction has gone to completion and produced nothing but product, so that all of our reactant is gone. That's the beauty of titration. <coughs> so we have the, the two chemicals in here. The, it's the, what volume of oxalic acid is required to titrate such and such in OH solution? So the thing that's being titrated is the sodium hydroxide. Right? And it's the oxalic acid that's in the burette. And it says what volume must be dripped down into the Erlenmeyer flask? Low volume of oxalic acid. So there's going to be some amount of volume here, we'll call it V, that gets lost. Right? So, so the meniscus up here, the little line up here, will drop down until it comes down here. And it's this much volume that was used to react away all the chemical in the Erlenmeyer flask. That's what we're looking for. We know the concentration of the oxalic acid in the burette. We know the volume, so we know how much sodium hydroxide is down here. And we also know the concentration of the, of the sodium hydroxide. And that's very, very important. Since we know both concentration and volume of sodium hydroxide, we can get to moles. Because uh, the, the molarity of a solution, the big M, the concentration, is the moles of solute divided by the liters of solution. The liters of solution is the, the volume, right? So what I can do is I can multiply both sides by, by the volume. And then volume times molarity gives me moles. That's very nice. Volume times molarity gives me moles. So now I, I can get moles of sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to start with 0 0.05320 liters of sodium hydroxide. I just converted my mils to liters. That's my volume. Now I'm going to multiply by my molarity of sodium hydroxide. 0 0.546 molar sodium hydroxide. If I punch this out, moles of sodium hydroxide. So I know how many moles of sodium hydroxide are down here in my Erlenmeyer flask. But I need to know in what way these chemicals are reacting together. So I know that it's the I have this oxalic acid H2C2O4 and I know that it's reacting with sodium hydroxide. 
So this is an acid-base reaction, oxalic acid with sodium hydroxide, which is a very common base. And in an acid-base reaction, I'm always going to produce water. It's called a neutralization reaction. And so the H's go with the OH's, and then the NA's go with the oxalate ions. So NaC2O4. Uh, now we got to balance it. All right. I'm, uh, we know that, I'm just moving this Na over. We can see by this chemical formula. You might not know what the charge on oxalate ion is, but we can figure it out based on this formula. We know that each hydrogen carries with it a 1 plus. So there's a 2 plus here total. So that means the oxalate must be a 2 minus because charges must cancel because the molecule overall must be 0. So that means this oxalate is 2 minus. In order to cancel the 2 minus, I need two sodiums since each sodium is plus 1. Now all the, all the molecules are neutral, that's good, and now I can balance the overall equation. So I need a 2 here and a 2 here, and you double check that, pause the video if you need to. Okay. So now I know how many moles of sodium hydroxide I, I had that reacted away by the titration, um, and I can relate that to the, to the moles of oxalic acid that I started with. Because after all, I'm looking for the volume of oxalic acid. It's a V. All right, so I'm going to take the moles of sodium hydroxide. I'm going to relate it to the moles of oxalic acid. So I need moles sodium hydroxide down here to cancel the moles sodium hydroxide up there. And then I'm looking for moles oxalic acid. Oops. O four. It's a two to one ratio. Two moles NaOH to one mole oxalic. Very good. This comes out to be zero point zero one four five moles oxalic acid. Good. But then it's asking me for the volume of oxalic acid. And I look over here and I say, the only known that I haven't used is the concentration of the oxalic acid. So I'm going to use this moles, say 0 0.0145 moles oxalic acid. And then I'm going to use the molarity as a ratio. So I'm going to say that there's 0 0.125 moles oxalic acid. for every one liter of oxalic acid, because that's what the molarity is. Great. So I punch this out, and I get 0 0.116 liters, which is my final answer. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.